Alright, we're going to start this pattern with uh, by using a stainless steel tube. This is a small diameter stainless steel tube, uh, two inch tube. And we're going to use plastic liner tube, of course. We have to line everything that's metal. So we'll just slip the liner tube inside the stainless tube. And we want to leave probably about two or three millimeters out the front. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll melt that next to a candle. And again, making sure we don't catch fire to it, we're just putting it next to the candle, not right in the candle. Okay. I'll just turn the tube around. And again, I'll cut with about two or three millimeters left over, or left out. Okay. And we'll do the same thing, we'll melt that next to the flame. Okay. And it should have a pretty nice tight fit there. All right, we'll get our nice stainless our, our stainless tube down that's been lined. We'll put it onto our tapered needle and slip it on just until it grabs hold there. Nothing worse than a spinning tube. Okay. And we're ready to start. Okay, we'll attach our thread here. Uh, again, leaving about a quarter of an inch at the back of the pattern so we can add our junction tube later. Um, I'm going to put a rib of oval gold tinsel on. Remember you're tying tube flies so nice long piece not a little short one that you would use on a hook. I'm just going to make a tag of you can see my tube spinning a bit so I'm just going to jar it in a little bit more. I think a tag about three or four maybe five wraps of the gold tinsel, oval gold tinsel. Okay. And for the back half of this body we're going to use some kind of burgundy colored floss. Just move my thread about halfway up the tube. Just move that tinsel back now. We want to try and get a nice even body here. We'll tie that off. Trim the extra. At this point I'm going to bring the rib across the floss body. Try and get it even as possible. And we'll tie that off too. Hey, at this point we're going to add a nice uh, spay feather to this. This is a uh, gray heron that's been dyed uh, claret. That's what it looks like coming out of the package. We strip it down, not strip it down, pardon me, we uh, just kind of play with it with our fingers, pull it down a bit so that we get all the barbs sticking out. I'm going to tie this in tip first. And we'll just put the rest back there like that. Trim some of that tip off. You want to make sure this is really tied down well because uh, you don't want it coming loose for sure. Okay, I'm going to use some fuchsia colored seal fur dubbing. It doesn't have to be seal, of course, you can use whatever you like. Uh, a lot of friends of mine use Antron instead. There's lots of good seal substitutes out there as well. 
but if you have the real thing you might as well use it. And a lot of guys too will put this on with the dubbing loop. I don't usually bother. Um, just spin it on quite tight. I'm going to get the front third of the body of this fly nice and dubbing. And remember don't don't crowd the head or the front of your tube. You definitely want to have enough room to make a nice small head on that. And remember we still have to get the wing in too. Alright. Now we're going to wind Palmer onto this uh, heron hackle. This gray heron is nice stuff because it's so long. You can really take your time and make as many wraps as you want, just about. I got to try and get, you know, at least five or six. And it looks pretty, uh, pretty goofy and pretty, pretty out of control right now. But we'll tame these fibers a little bit, pull them back, get them tied down. Hey, you can see how nice that the real deal with the heron is. Okay, on a lot of my spade flies, I like to add. Uh, like that natural teal feathers. Uh, with a tube fly though of course you're going to need much more well, more of a substantial feather I guess you could say. The little tiny ones aren't going to work for this. Right. So I've just trimmed away the, the uh, fuzz at the bottom. And again I'll pull the fibers down because we're going to tie it in from the tip. Right. Some feather ready to go here. Now some guys like to uh, put a very small collar on, maybe one or two turns. I like to go a little more than that. Let's see if we can get five turns out of this. You know, I really like the look of the teal. Sort of the fish, I guess. Yeah, I'll pull everything back. Just got the little tip there. We'll get rid of that. All right. Now I'm going to use a really simple wing on this. It's just a, almost like a general practitioner. I'm just going to take three, three uh, pheasant rump feathers, nice bright purple ones, and I'm going to stagger them so that they make one big wing. I'm not sure if you can see that or not but it's it's one feather and the next one goes down a little bit lower on it so that you're actually making a, the illusion of having a, a longer feather than you have. And the third one down now you can have a nice long wing just have to trim some of the fuzz off of the bottom So I'll just trim some of the fuzz off. Don't have to get all of it because when it gets wet, you don't really notice anyway. And I'm going to tie it right in, right on top. You have to really make sure they're secure too. Okay, and I'm definitely going to add jungle caulk on these. There's uh, just something about a spay flying and uh, 
jungle cock the real deal. Doesn't really matter to the fish so much, but have to catch the fishermen first, right? Okay, so I'll just get the two feathers, make sure they're sized up. And I always give the fly a spin, so make sure the cheeks are laying the way you want them. Hey, okay. I'll finish this head off. I probably left a little too much tube at the end here. Not really a big deal. Um, normally I'd go a little closer than that, but better a little further back than your actual thread running off the front. Right, we'll just glue that head. I'll definitely come back and do another coat of that later on. Uh, there it is. Hey, just going to do a quick demo on how to uh, attach the junction tube here. Now, some tires like to tie the junction tube right onto the the actual tube pattern. I like that later because it gives you a chance to switch things up. You can add different colors. Now we left that back almost quarter inch. I've got some nice pink or kind of pinky purple uh, silicone uh, junction tube. The first thing I'll do is I'll uh, slide it onto the back of my pattern. And you want to get as far as up as it'll go so it's a nice snug fit. So now you've got your pattern onto a junction tube. Now this is where you can play play a little games. You can have your cut the junction tube quite long and have your hook really set far back. Because this is a spay fly I'm not too worried about that though. If this is an intruder or something like that I might change it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna without cutting any of the nice spay hackle. Right. So now I've got, got my pattern with the junction tube in the back. And all I need now is a hook. Hey, now that the junction tube is in, uh, I've got my hook here. This is a size 2 egret hook. Kind of fitting using an egret hook on a fly that uses heron. Right. And there is my finished fly. I'll just give it one more coat of lacquer on the head. Right, there you are, ready to fish.